Confederate statue is a departure from, in our area, what we call the traditional rate making procedures and principles. What do I mean by that? Under traditional principles, a utility would come in front of the Public Service Commission, demonstrate that they have a need to build a new plant, whatever kind, and for right now, let's, let's for example, let's say a, new, a natural gas plant. They get that need, if they get that need approved, and it goes through some other steps, uh, through the Department of Environmental Protection, and then also through the cabinet, the governor and the cabinet sitting as a siding board, soon they get all that approval. They then start building a plant. As they incur costs, they capitalize those costs, they get finance charges each year as they spend the money. When the plant comes online and starts producing energy, they, they are then entitled to go to the Public Service Commission, prove that the expenses that they have incurred are reasonable and prudent, and that's what we look at, are they reasonable and prudent, and then they can add that uh, a plan into their what is called rate base, and then start collecting money on that investment as well as their operational and maintenance expenses to run the plant. The nuclear statute departs from that traditional principle in a few ways. First off, <clears throat> excuse me, first off, once a utility has to come in and get a determination of need approved, then the departure from the traditional rate making principles that the statute allows is this. They allow the utility to collect re or recover their costs as they incur them before the plant starts generating electricity on behalf of you, the consumer. Whether you agree with that or not, I, I, I'm not arguing for it against it. I'm trying to explain to you how the statute was set up by the legislature to work. As they incur the costs for pre-construction costs, they are allowed to collect them. And that is what you read in the paper about nuclear cost recovery uh, a nuclear cost recovery clause or a docket that's opened every year and the utilities, there's two of them, Florida Power and Light, Progress Energy, they have uh, need determinations that were approved. They are allowed to come in and ask to recover the pre-construction costs that they're spending. In addition, any construction type items, they are allowed to collect now the finance charge for those items. Then what will eventually happen is this, once the plant is built, <clears throat> the cost of construction will then be capitalized, it will go into their rate base, and the utility then has the opportunity to go to the Public Service Commission and ask for recovery on that investment through your rates. So the departure from the traditional rate making is the traditional they don't collect anything to recover any of your costs until the plant comes online and starts generating electricity. Under the nuclear cost recovery statute, the utility can start recovering now pre-construction costs, and those are like engineering, site for, uh, purchasing, site clearing, the cost to obtain their uh, license from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, etc. Those type of pre-construction costs, they get those now as well as the finance charge on top of, 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 excuse me, finance charge on any construction items that they expend now. And then when the uh, plant comes online and starts generating electricity, the, uh, the only amount that will be capitalized is the actual costs that were expended to construct the plant. Now, obviously, the reason that this is so near and dear, or one of the main reasons it's near and dear to a lot of folks' heart. Forgetting for a minute the whether you like nuclear or not is the fact that we're talking about quite a bit of money. And, and I'll conclude by just throwing this out to you. Florida Power and Light today, they, they, are, are, they are, have filed over the last three or four years to receive cost through the nuclear cost recovery statute on two items. One, uh, the, their new construction of Turkey Point 6 and 7, two new units that are planned down in uh, 
homestead, as well as two uprates. And what I mean by uprate is basically a reconditioning of a current plant that will allow it to produce additional electricity, megawatts, um, uh, from where, where it, it is producing now. They have uh, expended and have been approved to, to collect, and they have been collecting, approximately $509 million. And that is through, when I say that, that's through 2012. Progress Energy, they are also sending two items through the nuclear cost recovery statute for the past few years. One deals with the construction of their new plant, and a lot of people know, know that as the Levy Nuclear Project, LNP, or just plain Levy. In addition, they were doing some uprates uh, to, the, excuse me, an uprate to the Crystal River 3 prior to the delamination, and of course that plant is now in a shutdown mode, and there are no uprate uh, activities being performed there as we speak. Uh, but to date, uh, Progress Energy has uh, collected some $700 million, or will, through 2012, since 2008, uh, through the nuclear cost recovery statute. So, I want to set the stage, and, and uh, as we go through this, I'll, I'll uh, get more detailed questions that you may have, but I hope that that basically explains to you how the nuclear cost recovery statute in Florida works. 